born and raised in South Korea, accepted into Juilliard shortly after moving in to the States in 2008. They have a 7% acceptance rate, by the way. And upon graduating in 2012, wasted no time before putting the training into practice, immediately jumping in front of the camera and onto the stage where she has remained busy for just over a decade now with nearly 10 projects in the chamber. On the stage, she's acted alongside greats like Alan Cumming. On the small screen, she's provided her talents on shows such as Shameless, American Gods, We Bear Bears, 911, and Grey's Anatomy, and films like the 2018 Freaky Friday remake, 2022's Minsky and Love Island, and the film that brings us here today, the recently released Cocaine Bear. What the fuck is wrong with that bear? She is cool with on-screen nudity and simulated sex. <laughs> Obviously, Kai and Kim, thank you very much for taking the time to be here today. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for having me. I love that you included that. I don't know how you found it, or you probably went on a man's Instagram. It's very public, but... We, we go very deep on the Instagram. You. Weirdly deep. Hi, my name is Kai and Kim, and I'm 5 of 5. I'm comfortable with on-screen nudity and simulated sex. Obviously. <laughs> I just want you to know that was the most fact checked thing he'd ever checked before his, he, he said it before he had to know. We couldn't trust IMDB on this. Yeah. Yeah. Before he said it, he had to know. And we don't need to know why. It's cool with us. Um, with cool. <laughs> what was my guy said? Come on, Tyler. I need this. Yeah. Oh right, my so God. We have to listen. First off, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. We know there's a big time difference, but guess what? There's not a mind difference because we're on the same oh. page here. Now we have to get the cliche question out of the way first here. Now, how old or young or how how little small baby Jesus were you when you caught the acting bug and what inspired you? <laughs> Wow, baby Jesus. Um, uh, you know, uh, pretty young. I think I, I was I was really into acting since I was young. I grew up in Korea, never done it before. Um, to be honest, I do not have the face or, you know, personality to like really work in Korea. But my mom thought, you know, if you can't make it in Korea, you might as well try it in America. So why don't you go? So that's kind of how... I love, but I, I wanted to do acting for a long time. I just never got a chance to do it when I was really young and I really started what, in college. Was there a specific show or a specific thing you saw or someone that influenced you that really got you into it or before you knew what you were into it? You know, honestly, um, I mean, oh, this is so embarrassing, but I love the musical Cats. That is... <laughs> I also love that you guys both like went, uh huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, no, no, this I is mean, a no judgment zone. We both grew up in the like <laughs> 90s and right. no, that's cool. It that's a staple. I, yeah, yeah. God, that's how I just fall in love with both of you. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I love musical cast and I kind of was like a dancer before. And then I started doing musical theater and I really wanted to pursue that. But then I realized I can't sing as well as a lot of people who are very, very talented in singing from their borning. <laughs> That's not <laughs> from there. You know, like there are just people who are very, very skilled. And I yeah. think I can sing enough, but I, I just realized I don't have that pipe. And then, you know, if you don't have the pipe, then you can't be a lead on a musical, you know, theater Broadway show. So. That brings up a very important question. I was going to ask you this because my I had like a, a plan A, a plan A, and then a plan B. And what I mean yeah. was plan A was always to be an actor. Plan A, second A, was to not let plan A fail. But then I thought about what you just said, which segues me to another question. I said, listen, if I can't make it here, I hear all the time about people from other places coming here. So what would it be like to go over there? So let me ask you this. Did you always dream of crossing over? And like you said, was it something that you said, you know what? I'm going to just try to spread my port acting portfolio out and see what happens. You know, it, I was very lucky. Like, I think, you know, especially coming from a Korean family, not to like be the typical like Korean family, but both of my uh, parents are very academic and, you know, doctor and lawyer, like very, yeah, the, you know, stereotype. And, but my mom, for some reason, when I really wanted to be an actor, she didn't love it. But then she did encourage me to like, if you want to have a life as an actor, you should do it somewhere where you can go long term. And there are definitely actors in Korea who obviously have worked years and years and years and have a long career and who are amazing. And I look up to so much. But I think especially as a woman, like, you know, when I was young, like, I think she was just worried that I was kind of going to be discouraged by how much looked matter. And um 
not that I love myself and I think I'm beautiful <laughs> if I do my own, but you know, I think there's just a different aesthetic, like especially in Asia and especially in Korea, they very much care about how you look. So yeah. I think my mom really thought it was important that I loved the craft and not what I got from it. And that, um, that was one of the reasons I came to America and Yes, I definitely want to work in Korea, but I thought maybe, you know, if I make a name here and if I am, uh, if people know how good I am as an actor, if I can prove myself that way, I didn't have to necessarily fit into the type that, mm -hmm. you know, and in, in, in the prototype in Korean, Korea entertainment. So, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like your, uh, your parents are like realistic where they, they're not like pushy where they don't, like they accepted what you wanted to do and they were going to support it, but they also just want to make sure that you're being smart about it. Like they're, I'm trying to lead into the question here about Juilliard. Like, I feel like when you get accepted into Juilliard, that's like, it becomes a little bit easier for them to be it's, supportive. It's like the it goes MIT from, of the, the acting field, if you will. Yeah. Oh. Like, was that, was that like, what was that moment like? For, oh yeah. I mean, hundred percent. Like, I mean, that was why I still think, Oh, it's like, it's one of the best days of my life because I think like growing up until then, because I had nobody in the arts in my family and nobody to really guide me. I didn't have anybody who was in the field that mm -hmm. I just didn't know what was going on. Like, I, I think my parents were really worried that I was like good or not. They just didn't, they couldn't gauge it because they've never seen me do it, you know? And I think one of the big reasons like Juilliard meant so much to me, obviously it's a great acting school. But it was also that, you know, it was a school that my grandparents knew. And if I got into it, they were like, okay, she went to a good school. And my grandparents are very, very academic. Like I have, mm -hmm. a, you know, and everybody went to law school. And like, so to them, it's not even like having, like making a lot of money or, you know, necessarily being, it's more about like how smart you are in, in this world. And so I think that really kind of after that, they were like, well, She's got to do something right to get it. <laughs> yeah, 7%. Let me ask yeah. this now, because again, Juilliard is held as one of those prestigious schools as well as it should be. There's been a lot of great towns we've never even heard of. I mean, if you're going to, Ju people who want to be Hollywood actors don't necessarily say they want to go to Juilliard. And I remember when uh, my daughter, she's an actress as well, and mm -hmm. she's in college right now, but I remember she got an internship her senior year to uh, go to the internship program at Juilliard. She didn't wind up going, but one of the things I told her was I saw where they were having these schools that it wasn't just in America, it was in Korea and these other places. And I said, you know what, you get to have that experience. So let me ask you this. You got the Juilliard experience when you came over to the United States. Was that your first experience here or had you been here previously? And what was the experience like when you got there? You know, it's like America is such a great, amazing, weird country. <laughs> Like such a fucked up, but amazing. Like I have, I have such, especially as an adult, like I was so naive coming to the States. I, I, I didn't, my parents both studied in Wisconsin when I was very, very young. So I had that experience. I also lived in England for a year because my dad was getting his like, I don't know, third doctorate. And, and so we kind of followed wherever he was studying. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then like, I, I went to like, uh, ours high school in Michigan for my senior year. I, pretty much like did all my high school and like, you know, middle school in Korea. But then I had, you know, one year that I could spend in America and I did. And then, and then the real experience was New York city and like Juilliard and that whole thing. But that, I, I think that was like my first real American experience because I was an adult and not even, you know, I was so young, so naive and, and I was kind of in this bubble. And then, you know, I come out of that and, you know, move alone to LA um, and kind of experience like not only America as itself, but also, you know, I don't know if it's too heavy of a subject, but like racially, like, you know, politics, like those are things that I, like gender issues, like those are all things that I think in Korea, I wasn't necessarily forced to think about um, because you know, Korea is a one race country, like gender issues. If you talk about it, like people don't really like it. <laughs> so you don't, you know? So, so in that way, fucking love. And so I'm so sorry. Can I swear on this? <laughs> oh, yes, you can. Yes. yes. <laughs> Please swear. <laughs> um, but 
Yeah, but I just, that way I have gained so much knowledge and and perspective that I would have never had. And Two things really quick. If I didn't mean to cut you off, but one no, thing I want to say, because I don't want it to get lost. Uh, I have a new yeah. slogan for America. It's not the American dream for your home and the brave. It's America. <laughs> Effing, it's F up, but amazing. America yeah. is fucked up, but amazing. That is yeah. my new one. And let me ask you this. <laughs> let me ask you this now. Let me ask, because I want to get real here. And I know this wasn't on. Oh, the we're, we're in Florida, the epicenter of fucked up. Correct. <laughs> yeah, oh. we're erasing a African-American history now in the curriculum. That's a story <laughs> for another day. Um, with that being said, let me ask you this. Did and I know we didn't ask you this in the prelim of the questions, but mm -hmm. do you feel that you needed Juilliard to validate you, or was that just another step in the journey? Oh, 100 validation. And I the amount, oh god, I'm gonna tear up, but like the amount of validation that gives me as an Asian American actress, not Asian American, sorry, I'm not Asian American, I'm actually Asian Asian. <laughs> like it always trips me because I hey, I, hey. I, hey, hey. I'm like I'm I'm just Asian. But, but, um, but if I, the, the, the degree that, that of Juilliard means to me, isn't just like good. Oh, like I went to a great school. Like it kind of like, especially when I first graduated school, if I'm being real, like there was this like kind of a sense I got, I just never had that before, but like, oh, like yeah, sure. Let's see if you can act like that kind of sense. And I don't know necessarily if, it, if I was Asian, but I do think there is some sometimes a lot of the times the race did play into that. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and the fact the demeanor that people change when I say I went to Juilliard and how people treated me and suddenly like thought uh, like respected me in a different way. And it's very slight. It's not like anybody you know, suddenly like raising me up or anything. It was just the, it was all my peers too. It wasn't like, you know, like necessarily like casting directors or producers. It was like my peers. And, and that validation has, has made me survive in a way because I already, I, I always knew like, not that that's it, but I, I knew my worth already. And I think that worth could have very easily been um, discouraged during my years in LA, being in America, coming to a new country, if I didn't have that. Um, and yeah, and you know, I, I am thankful to be an a Asian actor, but also sometimes it's like, you know, there are things that are hard. And I think Juilliard definitely has helped me with that. I think you know? like, to, we scoff at the idea of validation as as artists of any kind like they we like to think that we're above it but validation is so important like in especially in like in a in a situation like yours it like it it's not everything but it relieves you of the burden of convincing everybody around you what you already know like for us doing a, a this channel we could do fantastic content and be very proud of it and we know we're doing a good job and we're doing our best mm -hmm. but until we have the silver plaque hanging behind us that will do the convincing that like the the, the credibility of our to. work doesn't it unfortunately doesn't speak for itself you have to have yeah. you have to have that whatever thing that people are looking for to um to get that validation one of the things she spoke to that i think a lot of us artists hope to get to. She said, you know, I'm an Asian Asian, I'm an, but I'm an actress. I think the one thing that I think that I, I hope we get to one day is that we never say, hey, there's that's the greatest Caucasian actress of all time. We just say they're an actress. Or, and I'm not saying that you're saying that. I'm yeah, saying that's how they look at us. I don't want to be that. looked at as an African-American. We're both in the AA, by the way, Asian, yeah. Asian African-American. <laughs> uh, I want to be looked at as a human being first, a great father, an intelligent person. I, I'm, I, I, acting is what I'm great at. It's not what I, it's not who I am and what I, it's just what I do. So I'm an actor, not an African-American actor. So until we get there, we have a lot of fighting to do. So I, I, I want more people to come over from all different places as you've done and experience it. I don't want to say yeah. just because Juilliard is in America, it's just the greatest ever. No, you don't, you wouldn't know this. Most teachers from Juilliard didn't go to Juilliard and yeah. ain't from America. Yeah, you know, for sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and I think that that's exactly what it is. I think it's just that, you know, I, I think somebody asked me, like, you know, when you walk into a room, what are you most aware of? Like, you know, I have my best friend is a white actress um, and and 
you know, and, and she's very, she's very vocal about, you know, gender equality, you know, um, uh, she's always very, you know, always on my side when I like talk about like, you know, racial issues and, or, you know, I have a hard time and she's, she's, even if she sometimes doesn't understand, she always listens and all this stuff. But she, she asked me once, like, I think I brushed off. She was like, oh, you know, feminism. And I was like, oh, I'm not a feminist. This was when I was back when I was very young. And, you know, and I also was saying stuff like, oh, like, oh, I don't, I don't know. I think things are getting better for, you know, Asian people and people of color. Like, you know, this is 2012 when they were saying like Oscar is so white, <laughs> like, you know, and I was just like, I don't know. Like, you know, and it was just the fact that I, I just wasn't exposed to it. And I think sometimes also like, people probably aren't exposed to it. So they just love to believe what they like, love to believe. But also like, you know, going back to like my, my friend asking my, me saying not a feminist, it's not because I think I, I'm not a feminist. I do now know that I am very much a feminist and, you know, I want equal pay and all of this stuff, but I walk into a room and I always see myself as an Asian woman. Asian, Asian person than more than a woman. That's my, and I think actor is something I also hold on to. There's certain identities I think people relate to. And an Asian has been the biggest thing coming to America for me. So, you know, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know how we diversion into this, but so, yeah. So I think those kind of things are very, very important to me to speak out about because, you know, I know people probably have that experience, like they can relate to me or they might not. And it's always nice to hear when people have different experiences, because I probably don't know your guys' experience as people, you know. I identify as an AA as well. I'm always an a always an asshole. Uh, but no, I wanted, I, 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 we put. Uh, I, I wanted to say congratulations on on Juilliard, and like we said in the intro, seven percent. You are you are in the seven percent that ha that are accepted. Um, to the ninety three percent that tried to and failed. What, like, if you could impart a little bit of knowledge, like, just give them a morsel of what they missed. Um, so some piece of advice that they could have picked up on had they uh, were been as good as you. Oh, God. That's a loaded oh, question. They're, they're yeah, I know. <laughs> and, and I, and I, read, yeah, and I read the question. And I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Just working hard. <laughs> I think working hard is important. <laughs> You know, I think that I think that answer would have worked before that college admission scandal came out. So we're going to do a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> um, true, true. All right. All right. All right. I'm sorry. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, I think really work ethic. Like, that's one of the things that Juilliard is, is you know, even if you're not uh, like, don't want to, you have to. You're forced to. Yeah. So, yeah, I think. That's universally true, too, because even with us on a small scale here, the people that we choose to work with over and over again are not the ones that are like doing it perfectly. They're the ones that are just doing it when they say they're going to do it and consistently and they show up when they say they're going to be there and they don't just have an idea. They actually go out and do something with the idea. Yeah, I was yeah. hoping you could, you could help me out real quick. I've never been on the campus of Juilliard, but is there any truth to the rumors I've seen online that certain professors are, let's say, Whiplashes, the film. Oof. Just Oof. wink if you can't speak about it. <laughs> <laughs> what am I and like? your turn. Your turn. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I'm just totally joking. Um, <laughs> oh, that was a lot of winks. Um, no, no. I, I mean, no. It, it's weird. Yes, yes, and no. I guess I, I don't like whiplashes. It's kind of abusive, and I yes, there are. I think there are. There were certain tactics that were used that. Could, you know, kind of be, you know, I'm sure it could be problematic, but to be honest, I loved school. Like I also come from Korea where uh, teachers are very, very, you know, strict and mean and, you know, and to, so play, to play devil's advocate, you could argue that they're just preparing you for the reality of what 100%. you're going to be stepping into when you leave that. Speaking of being now speaking of being prepared, you graduated and we've heard you've had quite a few adventures since then. And of course, a couple of projects as well. Is there anything you care to share about what happened in your timeline since Juilliard? God. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, it was, uh, I mean, I had a fun ride. Um, I think the first year of graduating was really, really hell for me because I, I I'm a 
Korean citizen. I still am. And um, so the first year really was how do I stay in this country? That was like my goal, like visa, like and like there are artist visa, but there were not a lot of people, even at Juilliard, like people who work with visas. There wasn't a lot of there weren't a lot of people who helped with like actors specifically. And like the visa system is very weird in America. Like you have to kind of like you have this thing where you kind of have to like prove yourself in a year that you're worth it to stay here in order to like get even apply for a artist visa. So the first year I just did everything on earth that anybody can hire me for. And I put it up on my uh, put it up on my resume because the the truth is like the people who work at the uh, you know the visa facility they don't know necessarily how important you know you know what I mean when you just hear a project so like it's the more the better that's what I heard mm-hmm. at least from my lawyer at the time so I just auditioned and at the time I was non union because I just graduated so any non union you know union any scrap i could get i auditioned for i don't know um, if this is ever an issue before for you speaking of the citizenship and the visa we interviewed a gentleman remember the interview we did he cost us it was about two million dollars because his visa expired and they were gonna they were liable because he was working and he was not supposed to work it went all the way to the studio head and mm-hmm. and it was like a crazy thing so has has that cost you roles before having to get the visa keeping oh. it up or Oh, hundred percent. I had a, like, I, I think one of the biggest haunch, like, like the hardest thing I had to go through was that I was supposed to test for an NBC pilot, um, that I already did a play for in Philadelphia. So I did like the, you know, the play and then it was going to be made to a pilot and, um, you know, callbacks and all this stuff. And it was like, I was so green now it, it's a little different because I mean, I, I would still love you know, those are important, but at that time it was like my first test. Like, you know, you, you go to NBC and do the whole thing. And I think a couple of hours before they canceled it because they said they just can't work with my visa. And, you know, it it wasn't even that I needed the, I mean, I would have loved to book the job, but it was a fact that I didn't even get the opportunity. And it was something that was so out of my control that I, it was so devastating. And yeah, and and after I got my green card, this might totally be just in my head, but I worked so much more. That's, like, that, it's not yeah. visa; it's the green card. Never leave well, home yeah, without. Yeah, I can it. imagine one. because you hear like it's you go on uh, even like an an actor that has that one less uh, hurdle for the execs to go through, I guess, or whatever. Even for them, they're like. You know, you have to audition a hundred times to get one part, maybe. And I couldn't imagine like a- adding even the slightest little speed bump to that process. Oh. Like, has to be a disadvantage, and uh, any disadvantage in an actor trying to succeed in an audition. Well, in some strange way, you can tell me if I'm wrong. I think by her having that, at least for her and certain people who have work ethic, which she mentioned, it almost keeps you more prepared and more sharpened because everybody else just has to show up. They don't have these hurdles. Man, if I'm just great and talented, I'll be good. No, you need work ethic. I'm going to be prepared. I'm not going to let this be a hurdle yeah. next time. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was just, I I, I mean, I think one thing, good, good and bad, like think about Juilliard that when I came out, I was just so, one of my biggest hurdles at school was language because I obviously didn't speak like this coming from Korea. Now, now people think I'm American, but you know, when I first got into school, I had a pretty thick accent. I didn't under, I didn't communicate well. And thank God for my like 17 classmates who fucking helped me through the four years. Like they're, that's their family to me. And, and I really, and all the voice teachers who are, you know, sometimes harsh, but like for me, it worked because it's a different language and, you know. So yeah, like when I first came out to LA, any audition I had, like I would have to wake up and my goal was always to wake up in the middle of night and just know it backwards and forwards. Like just know the lines backwards and forwards. Like I had such huge anxiety that one day I'm going to get caught that I'm a foreigner. (laughs) Like somebody's going to say, oh, she's Korean and she can't speak English. That was my biggest fear. For years and I still have it. It's like still one of the like biggest fears when I go on set, which is so stupid because, you know, like if 
now if I have an accent, like who cares? Like it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> like the one trick know. I have learned from that is this: I used to hate that for for whatever. If you're a minority, like oh my goodness, they're gonna just look at me and I'm like, wait a minute, hold on. I'm going to use their bias against them. Sometimes they're only looking for people like me and I actually can act. So, you know what? I'm signing up for that <laughs> shit. I'm going to show them. A- we love that. I'm going to so <laughs> you. got to flip that. it on their head. Yeah, yeah, that's right. With the, um, with the non-union roles, do you, is there a particular story that stands out to you? I'd imagine there had to be some pretty interesting sets. <laughs> where there's, <laughs> that's a great word. Yeah, I, I mean... Like <laughs> Some sets were amazing. Some sets were really fun, actually. Like I've I've done some like really cool stuff too, um, especially like oh, student. We, we do non-union, so like that's like we don't. Our we can always. Like, so I'm not throwing any shade. I just I know that sometimes you know th- that our aspirations are not always met. <laughs> yeah. With a low budget. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even have aspirations with. You're so boxes. nice. You keep saying yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I was mean, an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, also some people are really, you know what I really can't handle, like really non-union or not, when people are really mean to background people. Like mm. it really, really, really bothers me. Like I just and I get it. Like that's why we have SAG and you know, we have that. But I j- and I, I and there's a lot of personalities i'm sure like we're all actors like you know like i'm sure we can get from bug- like you know i i understand but like sometimes i see not that i necessarily ever got treated that way but on set now and when i was on union and i watched people who were there to help this person because they knew them and they were doing a favor and yet this person was still mean to them i just mm-hmm. don't get it. I just we interview we interviewed the legendary Barry Corbin about two years ago, and what he told us was, and he was so genuine. People know him from Northern Exposure and probably five decades of acting. He said he was on set one time, and he saw this guy. He he would not name who it was, but he said he saw him belittle uh, uh, an extra, and he went up to the director and the agent and said, "If that guy is working here or ever does that again, I'm walking." And he. And, and to me, it lets me know that, again, there are still good human beings out there. No matter, forget being a diva. You don't treat people a certain no. way. No, I, I really don't love that. Yeah. Um, let's get into the IMDb of your uh, career here. We're in 2013. You were in the uh, Funny or Die short series with Eliza Coop, Frenemies. Uh, you played a manicurist in episode three. <laughs> and I just thought it was funny. It kind of leads to like what he was saying. You know, there's they are looking for that person, you know, Um do you ever do you think to yourself when you're down down there like I graduated from fucking Juilliard? Don't I don't either want to be pretending to do nails right now. Or did you look at it as like these are the necessary steps that one takes? This is just I'm paying my dues. I loved that question when you wrote it down. It made me laugh so hard. God, well, because if I if I were just watching that, like I would not have like oh that's a Juilliard graduate right there. Like it. Oh. It's not a role that I would assume somebody like that would get. I couldn't like I just know for me personally, my ego would have got the best of me in that situation. Like I should be in that fucking seat up there doing the main lines. Who is this girl? You know what? You know what's really fucked up? I think when I graduated, my ex expectations were so low, like truly. And and I do like I not to like mention the race thing again, but I think that goes into it. I was like, like the only asian you know presenting woman in the in the class so so um i think i just didn't have the same expectations as other classmates i i could tell from the get-go like you know like race or no race i just i just could just tell and and also like the one of the grad one of the graduates who graduated before me she was a she was a korean american and she said you know do not ever compare yourself to your other white classmates like ever and it's still like it's such a mind fuck because i still like sometimes when people ask me like what my dream role is like i can't picture myself like like in cer- certain times like as a lead if it's not a show about an asian like topic or it's an asian specific show like it, it's i mean i do and i 
I, I will, you know, I will put that out in the universe, but there is, it's still like, I don't have, it's weird. Like a lot of Juilliard grads I hear, like, I think a lot of people sometimes have problems with like these, like Juilliard, Yale, you know, big schools because they graduate and they think they, you know, they, uh, that's what I heard. I've never mm. experienced that because I'm just, I was just thankful to work. Honestly, I've never, I did not think that when I was working, I was just like, Oh my God, this is so exciting. Like, you know, like, uh, like uh, you know, I, I don't think you're alone in that. Like, that's one thing we learned doing this show with all the interviews. Cause we interview people from, we, sometimes we get lucky. We get the writer director, but we go we, we, like, if any, if you're on the set, you have a story to tell and we want to hear it. Like, we'll talk to the guy that made the sandwiches. And there's one thing that like we realized, like, I assumed, and I think a lot of people's assumption is that when somebody becomes an actor, their aspiration is to be th the name above the title. And and anything below that is you just haven't reached your full potential yet. You haven't reached your goal as an actor. And mm -hmm. with all the people that we've talked to, I've found out that a, a lot of them, they don't want to be that name. They don't want that attention. They don't want that resp responsibility. They just want to act. And it doesn't really matter where their name is at. They're just happy to be working. Well, now, listen, I do want my name out there. <laughs> and well, I do put want it the all point, glory dude. and honor. <laughs> <laughs> and I want the fame. <laughs> but, um, don't get me wrong. That's why I became an actor. <laughs> I thought that our other guests were lying to us this oh, whole time. I didn't want to call them out. No, yeah, no, I think she's the first one to be honest. They all I want honestly, it. Like, I want it. You want it. I, I, I honestly, sometimes when people are like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't, which I totally get. I'm sure some people, I've never experienced that kind of fame. But when, act, you know, actors or entertainers are like, oh, I don't want to be that famous. It's like. Oh, come on. Like, yeah. if you really just wanted to act for the pure love of acting, you could have done it in the backyard of your, you know, house with That's someone. I wanted it, and then social media happened, so I'm done with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, speaking of speaking of right before the whole boom of the Twitters and the social media, now your career kept going, which I love, because if anybody knows this in the, as an actor, as an artist, keeping up work is hard. So it's 2014. Yeah. Uh, you were working on a short film called Obituaries with uh, starring yeah. James Franco. Now, of course, with everything going on today, it was kind of foreshadowing the future that we live in now, or the reality about school shootings. What was it like to work on that project and what are your thoughts on it oh god um it, i mean again one of my one of my first projects that i've done in la um it was also one of those projects i mean it, that i was like oh i need to like work so but it just ended up being an amazing opportunity and i had it, it was a very i had a very small part you know in it um but i it was a it was a great set it was a great story like um uh, yeah, I think at the time I didn't know the weight of it because it wasn't, I'm sure it was happening all over America. I just, I, I was still kind of like new to America and, you know, and gun violence was, you know, we don't have that in Korea. So it's kind of like a very new territory. But mm -hmm. now I, yeah, I think back and I'm like, shit, that shit is all like everything in that movie is just it happens and it repeats, which is insane to me. Now, there is a, I'm sorry, there is really so, quick, really somebody quick. brought up a really great parallel that, that, cause I, I, I never thought about the perspective of school shootings as somebody outside of America and especially somebody in South Korea. Cause there, I can't remember who did this documentary. It was this little snippet thing on YouTube, but it was so brilliant. Cause I always wondered like, how do you live in South Korea with North Korea right there, that yeah. looming presence. And this, this video was all about, that like people asking like talking to people in south korea and somebody had brought up that like it's just it's just something like we don't even think about it it's just something that we that it's just is what it is and we live yeah. our life and it, it is what it, and they were like yeah. kind of like you guys in america you send your kids to school knowing that what could happen at, at the school um yeah. yeah i just i thought that was a very interesting parallel sorry for the deviation no no, no you're fine because i want to ask a question with respect to and you know i don't want you to slander anyone and if you want to decline to answer this that is fine now you did this film in 2014 so it's a revisionist history we've heard certain we'll just call them allegations about james franco i'm not asking about with you anything personally what were your thoughts knowing that you had already worked with him and even if in a small comp uh, role what were your thoughts on what was happening at that time and do you have any thoughts on what those things that came out about him 
honestly, I don't know really the ins and outs about what ha- about the allegations, to be honest. Mm. Um, and I did not necessarily work with him. Like all my scenes Good. was with uh, this actor, Justin, who's right. who played my boyfriend and he was awesome. And um, so I honestly didn't really have a thought about it. I, I love that. That we were all laughing and having a great time. And then all of a sudden, like, hey, quick segue. Let's talk about school <laughs> shootings and uh, <laughs> SA allegations. I think these are important. Gonna, yeah. No, I, I appreciate it. I'm going to bring us. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take us. Uh, I'm going to steer this thing back to Thank you. a happy place. In 2014, you were in two episodes of the TV series, The Mysteries of Laura with Deborah Messing and Joss Lucas. And one of those episodes happened to be directed by Mick G. Um, what was that experience like? And what uh, we were in our, we just did a thing on Christian Bale's blow up in Terminator Salvation. And one of the funniest parts to us was when he turns to Mick G is like, Mick G, are you seeing this? Can you? And Mick G's like, I didn't I, see anything. I didn't, I didn't see, see anything. anything. I just thought that's he's a very <laughs> I'm, so I'm curious what was your experience like working with him and, and working on that show oh my god it was so cool it was like my first one of my first recurrings on is that true no sorry a Disney at that point Disney when I was on Disney it wasn't a recurring I think so this was like my first and then I went back to the show so it became a recurring but I think at this point this was like my first like network TV show and I auditioned so many times and, and, you know, and went, even went to Warner brothers in LA before I flew out to New York, um, that when I got it, I was, it was so surreal. And, and, you know, this is one thing about me. I don't know anybody. Like I don't know any actors. I do not know any creators, producers, I have multiple times said, hello, nice to meet you to a casting director who has cast me multiple times. I am so, which, you know, my manager had a conversation about me with that I should stop doing that. Um, I, I, I just blank up. And I think there's like this weird thing in me that I try not to like see people in a certain lens, like, you know, and I really try that very much, like very hard. So even if I hear about them, I try to forget it's like a weird thing and I get I can get very obsessive about um industry stuff because I love what I do so I want to know everything but sometimes I the older I get I'm like that's not healthy so anyway going back to Wing G he was awesome he's fucking great I loved him like you know I I worked with him once I think like on that episode the first episode and he was great and God, Deborah Messing, I did know because I learned English watching Will and Grace. And it was truly like, like, God, it was such a, it was my first job. Like, you know, there are so many things that I would want to change. Obviously, I could do a better job and I could be so much more comfortable. But Mm -hmm. you can never take away my first recurring, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So what, what, um. What was that like being on, like coming out? Did like did you call your parents? Did you tell them about like getting this job? Like what? Did- oh yeah, yeah. And you know what? I don't tell my parents nor anybody really in my life when I um, get on a new show anymore nowadays, because mm-hmm. I know it's like it's like. Uh, thank you for saying that because sometimes I think like especially people who are close to me get really upset. Like you know, I was shooting Cocaine Bear in Ireland and. My mom was like, where are you? Like, why is there like a lamb behind you? <laughs> like, she was like so confused. <laughs> like, Can I just ask you this real quick? Because yeah. I'm just thinking about this. You know, I've been working so hard. We all work to try to get to a certain point. Can you imagine her mom wishing her the best? Like, she's really been working hard. She's praying her. My daughter's going to do it. She's going to make it one day. And she gets the call, <laughs> mom. I'm working on cocaine beer. Her mom is like, you know what? Fuck it. You know, we try. You, you, I know this nice doctor you can meet. Like, what did you say? <laughs> oh, my God. No, my mom is very, like, she's so funny. She's, like, she's supportive of anything. Like, she is, like, my rock. She's so, so supportive. And, like, I think the, I think sometimes it's a little too supportive. So, like, you know, I would be, like, getting a call back for audition and she'd be like, so what happened? Did you get it? Like, yeah, make sure you, like, reach out to that person. You know, I was, like, testing for um, Ken Jung's pilot uh, a while ago, like, Dr. Ken, and my mom was just like, oh, my, she could not 
you know, she just gets so excited and, you know, obviously I didn't get it. (laughs) So, you know, but she, she just gets so, so I've learned to, because then that psychs me up. And then I realized sometimes my only high came from when I booked jobs and when I was working and that was my, it it started to be like, that was my only worth. And that was really hard. So Mm -hmm. I, I learned to kind of, now I think I need to like balance a little more, like, you know, tell your family and friends, they're your close friends, they should know what's going on with your life. And if you're in a different country, but also it's more for me, it's not really about them. It's, you know, so anyway. now speaking <laughs> of jobs, you've booked now don't be modest, because in 2014 and 2015, you've made it to the house of the mouse, you just cannot get enough of AA, you've been lying to us because you did three episodes of Disney's Austin and Alley. Now compared to the other sets you've worked on, what was it like to work for Disney, a.k.a. now Marvel? Um, And I did not write the last part of this question. But I really want to know. So thank you. You ask it. Did anyone try to take photos of your feet? Wait, what is that? What? Okay, wait. I, I, wait, so what, what was that question about? Please ask me. Yeah, I want to know. The, the, the dude that was like behind uh, Whataburger, or not Whataburger, um, uh, the Ke- Ken- Kenan and... Don't look uh, at me. We're both looking at you. Kenan and uh, Carol... <laughs> all that um uh what's the movie good burger uh the the pretty much the dude that did most of uh most of the shows on nickelodeon for the better part of the 90s and early 2000s it was just revealed that he has like a foot fetish and then if you go back through all the shows that he did there was always weird things with these young girls with the feet and uh uh yeah so uh, that's so to reiterate why are you asking this question is what she said I'm uh, still not there. Oh, oh, it wasn't. You know what? You know I what? I take it. it back. I want I, to answer it. Let me answer it. <laughs> okay, please, please. Okay. Because, you know, okay. these things happen on these sets. So maybe you can. So the only reason I asked you why was because, no, nobody came up to me and tried to take feet pics. But okay. I am on like this random. I think my mom Googled me and found it, which is also like uncomfortable for everyone. But like she found like, you know, those feet sites. No. Like, mm-hmm. it, <laughs> no. No. You nodded. I saw you. <laughs> he did. He did. I saw it too. He saw, I saw it. Fucking, you nodded. <laughs> hey, I'm editing this interview. You don't, yeah. I'm editing this one, not you. Um, but I might like, they, they take certain like, um, yeah, stills from like Austin and Alley or like stuff like, uh, you know, some shows I've been in and they, they like, and it's not really even feet pictures. They're like my foot in a heel. Like, you know, it's like very mm-hmm. random. It's not like, I can't imagine that's any way like some sex- people, some people like the foot to be uh, naked and some people like the foot to be clothes. There's, there's all yeah. kinds of ways that people <laughs> prefer their feet. The only foot I like is locker. <laughs> Moving I'm on. So, so to, the previous part of that question, what was it the Disney set like versus, was there any difference? Like, was it more corporate or was it just more fun? What was the difference like? That was my first job. That was my first acting job, a TV acting TV job. I didn't have a re- like a TV acting job un- until like a year and 10 months into my career. Like I've done other stuff like, you know, movies and like shorts and stuff like that, but in theater, but that was my first TV job. And it was so fucking awesome, man. <laughs> like I fucking loved it. I was eating up every second and I fucking killed it. <laughs> Like I was so funny and they needed me to speak Korean. My character speaks Korean. Like, I mean, and the thing is she speaks, she knows she speaks perfect English. Just not because she's like, she can't speak, you know, English. Like I thought it was Mm -hmm. so cool. There are certain lines. She just like says it in perfect English and she just decides to ignore completely what you're saying and just answer in Korean. (laughs) Really quick before you ask the question, I'm glad you said what you said because we just we've just answered the age old uh, the age old adage. What one career gets to speak in third person? <laughs> Actors and actresses don't try it, kids. If you're not us, thank you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I yeah. do it all the time. I do it all the time. So uh, so yes, I I I loved and and because of that, it's not on my IMDb, but. Uh, I booked like super at the time it was called super awesome. Katie, Katie, it was Zendaya show. Um, Casey undercover in it. I think it ended up being, um, and I ended up being cut from the pilot. I was one of the series regulars on it to play her friend, but, um, 
but I got that opportunity, which was like so cool. Like, even though I didn't end up being in it, it was just like, you know, I was also not in high school. Like I was, <laughs> yeah. I was, you know, but it was just so fun. I just loved that experiencing that. And then, you know, I'm sure you'll talk about it. I, I ended up being in Freaky Friday, which was also so awesome. I, I had a really fantastic time with Disney. Um, yeah, we will get to Freaky Friday shortly. How are you on t- on time? We're about halfway through the questions, I believe. Oh my god, I have nothing to do. Okay. Yeah. What time is it there? Oh, I'm not in Korea anymore. I came back. <laughs> oh, I, I forgot to mention that to you. <laughs> All right, let's <laughs> yeah. keep going. Okay. <laughs> That's why I we like, were like, we were like, I oh, feel it's so bad. I feel bad. Okay. I was wondering what you were implying earlier. Like, oh man, we're in different. Yeah, I time. wanted to wait, so it wasn't a big, a, a big as a, a time difference. We're cool. We're cool. <laughs> um, all right. In 2016, you starred as Melody in the season seven episode of Shameless, titled "Eye of the Storm," and this episode was actually directed by Emmy Rosholm, who of course plays Fiona Gallagher on the show, one of the leads. This was actually her first time directing ever. What was that like for you, working with a first time director? who also happened to be like someone very close to the show oh my god it was it was great like it was so cool like I also like out of the rare actors I know I knew her because I watched you know Phantom of the Opera because I was a musical theater freak when I was in Korea um so yeah it was just so cool to be frank I didn't really watch Shameless before now I can say it because uh, I've be already done an episode. Yeah, <laughs> to be frank. Um, but I did watch before, obviously, being on the show because I think, like, you know, understanding the tone and stuff like that is important for me. But um, but it wasn't like I wasn't a, like, you know, oh, my God, a, a fan. As many people are, I later found out because out of a lot of the things I've done, I think that was the thing that people recognized me the most at the time. You had your own wiki page for that character. Insane. Yeah. Who would have thought? (laughs) (laughs) And and I would imagine that like when you're working with a director who is also used to be in, knows what it feels like to be in an actor's shoes. uh, Is that like a different experience than working with a a director who's never been in front of the camera? Is the communication, do you notice it being different? Yeah. I mean, I think there are definitely... I don't think it's just uh, directors who are actors, but there are um, directors who very much communicate well with actors. Like they know how to communicate. And there are directors who do not know how to communicate, but they still do amazing work. Like, I don't think it, you know, like there are surprises when I'm like, oh, okay, wow, that looks amazing. Like I I would have not thought to like, you know, have that shot or, you know. So I think it, you really can't tell until like there's an end product but I do love, yeah, there is there a kind of an understanding, I do think, when um, when a director turned, no, an actor turned director comes and helps you, I think, yeah, for sure. And especially because she was on the show, she knew the tone and stuff, which was really, really great. Yeah, I truly think the position of AD was created for the directors who cannot communicate with actors oh, or the set. Oh. I'm only here to do the movie. Nobody fucking talk yeah. to me, okay? Yeah, I don't right. want to talk to the studio Stanley heads. Stanley Kubrick could have really Leave used a David McGifford. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing: you've been one of the fortunate people to not burn out, and of course, do two stints. This is your second set at uh, Disney Island. It's 2018. You returned to the Mouse to uh, star the musical adaptation of Freaky Friday. Now, of course, this was directed by Steve Carr, who happened to direct another movie where things get freaky uh, on a Friday. That's 2000's Next Friday. You're in a musical called Just One Day and Freaky Friday. Can you please talk about the process and what it's like from being on a normal set where it's just acting to a musical set and were you up for the challenge? Oh my God, it was so cool. (laughs) I feel like I'm saying everything is cool, but it was really cool. Like it was like, you know, and and I recorded a song that I don't think I ended up being in the film, but you know, you can see it in the bonus, like, you know, scenes and whatnot but and remember that reporter because it's crucial that we quarter the business is depending on this one success yeah it was it was really really exciting i wish i danced more i think that's one thing that i i was kind of sad about um but the the, the number around the uh the dinner table um where they're getting everything ready and, and all that i'm just it. <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, this the research of these interviews, the places it takes me. I, it's, ah, it's, I love that. Uh, but the uh, 
I'm curious, like a scene like that compared to like an independent film, like how long does a scene like that take on a production that when, you know, with Disney? Yeah, I think that took about like two, three days. I want to say it's either two or three. It was definitely more wow. than one day. That's um, crazy. We'd, we'd, yeah. we'd try to do like three hours tops. <laughs> Get in and I don't out. think I could ever do it because here's and not because I don't love TV or film. I just think if I was on a Disney set, which I would definitely take the check. I just think that they'll be sitting there all day. Did we offend anybody? Can we play this? I'm like, dude, I just wanted to fucking well, scene and go and, home. And I asked that because that's like one of the things we always like whenever we're, we're we, we do independent film and we so we encounter people that want to act. They never acted before. They want to try it out. And you see that like that look of realization after the first few takes to like, oh shit, this is like, you mean like a 90 minute movie takes more than 90 minutes to make? It's not all like real time like that when they realize that they're going to be there for a whole day just to do this three to five minutes and yeah, we're not going to see them tomorrow. They're not coming <laughs> back. They don't really, they realize like, yeah, no, like I don't want to be movies, not yeah. making them. Yeah. Yeah. And like the whole, like, you know, close up you know wide and like you know prepping yourself for all that like that's definitely something like because i always thought you have to go full out no matter what but now unless it's my close-up i don't act <laughs> <laughs> can we all agree on the one turn when you realize an actor or an actress is not going to make it hey man didn't they just get that go home kid yeah, yeah that was just like 10 more angles um you're uh you're in a good portion of 2019 second season of the very highly acclaimed series american gods this movie or uh, this show is on my uh it's on my watch list it has been for a long time neil gammon is like it, it's, it's like visionary is as a word i don't like to throw around too much because it's pretentious but i think visionary is a nice is an easy way to describe this uh show what was and this was like a reoccurring part we're not it seems like I, I didn't watch this one, but it seems like you come as like you, different manifestations of the same character. Is that a correct assessment? Yeah. So what, in the book, like? huh? yeah. So in the book and um and uh and in season one, it was Jillian Anderson who portrayed this god of media, and that is the original character in the book. And then the second season was being made, and then I came as new media which is also a spun on like, you know, new media, like Twitter and Instagram and stuff like that, which is very, very cool. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So I was basically like a reborn version of media. It feels like a show like that or just material like that might be difficult to like, how do you get into the character or something that's so intricate and involved? Like, do you, do you fully, do you do you know like the big picture of what's happening when you're in a scene in a show like that or like how, no. how much do you know? And that's and I think you, the really hard part. Like every about, actor asks, like, what's my inspiration? Where am I coming from? Yeah, like and where do I go? Because I want to, yeah. you know, I, I want to know where it goes. And and I think that is like a really big challenge. Like, even like when I I think when I got cast, I just wasn't like I got cast with so many like ideas, like, you know, even in the audition process that I just wasn't necessarily wasn't sure what, what was, you know, what was a whole arc, but our showrunner, um, Jesse, um, I love, I think he's so, so fantastic. And, you know, I, he was very collaborative, which was very new for me, especially in TV, because I think TV is very separate. And, um, he was so into like listening to ideas and, and yeah, he's, he was like one of my favorite, like creators that I, that I worked with. And, um, yeah, but it was, it was definitely like a challenge because it's also like, you know, sci-fi. Yeah. I mean, is that is that the right word? Sci-fi, like you know, uh, oh, um, oh. fantasy. So, yeah. so it was definitely a challenge. But it's, it's I seems to delve into the abstract. I think what she's yeah. doing, she's pulling, she's pulling the curtain back on what a lot of people who want to go into this industry don't know is that simply being one type of actor or one type of artist isn't going to cut it. You can be a method actor and stick to the script, and you know what you you and I both know this. You'll go to set. We're no longer doing that. We're doing this, and you got to change on the fly. And if you can't adapt, you're going to drown. Yeah. Everything you said that that I 
definitely going to watch that show before I die. Because every even just you describing your character, it's just such an intriguing concept. Uh, um, and, Not and, before and, you die. <laughs> well, it's, uh, I've got this like list of things that I'm. I'm my plan is my life plan is that I'm, I'm, it's not going to be a freak accident. I'm going to know like three months in advance or something like that. I'm going to be, I'm going to be a deathbed situation, hopefully, because I've got my watch list queued, like bucket list movies and shows that I plan on like family, friends, stay away from me. I've got 200 films and TV series that I need to watch before I go. I just want you to know me and you are hearing this for the first time, but American, <laughs> American gods, uh, American Gods is on that list for another reason, and that's because Crispin Glover is in it, and I love him. And I saw a story. Love yeah, him. Uh, I saw a story on your Instagram that caught my attention about Crispin Glover walking in on you while taking a selfie, and I was wondering if you could elaborate on that. And and Crispin, he is such a fascinating human being. If you had any interaction with him, I would be very curious to hear how that went. Yes, I did have a lot of interaction with him because a lot of my scenes were with him. It was him and another actor who played Tech Boy. Um, and he played Mr. World. Crispin, I am so obsessed with. I am too obsessed with him. Like, you know, I don't I don't watch like, you know, movies or stuff just because I worked with them. But after I worked with him, I was like, I need to watch everything. <laughs> Oh, um, his, he, his performance in Charlie's Angels, he's like, he makes Charlie's Angels so and, fantastic. And I did, I do think I watched that film. I just didn't put it together that that was him because I think I was pretty young when I watched it. Well, that's just how good of an actor he is. He's in so many things that you never know it because he disappears him into this character. It's always about the art and not about the money. You yeah, I'm sorry. Me. Please go ahead. I keep you interrupting you because I love is, him. You no, know, that is exactly what it is. It's all about the art. He's one of those people that it's all about the art. He's like, let's sit on the makeup t table. Let's he talk said, about why we're doing that. He said no to Steven Spielberg and Robert Zemeckis, and he still has a career. Like that's that's he and he sued them, and he still has a career. So that's oh, that speaks for that. itself. Yeah, um, they they yeah you know, the whole Back to the Future thing. They they wanted him to be in Back to the Future too, and he's like. No, I don't do sequels or something. No, they didn't like want that. to go back to the table. <laughs> Some weird. They didn't like, want to go back to the table yeah. to renegotiate. <laughs> anyway, uh, so sorry. Please get to yeah, No, oh, he's guys. very much like art. Like what? Like you know, this he could definitely. I mean, any actor can like take it as a job and like you know, just he's like, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the choices. Let's talk about like why. Let's talk about a relationship. Let's talk about backstory. Like, oh my goodness, it was like so like so refreshing but also like so like inspiring to be that amazing at what he does and still care that much and be you know be like it, it was just amazing to watch him and like he's also so funny because you know um yeah I mean that that selfie story I think like truly sums it all like that <laughs> <laughs> I was taking a selfie in the green room um, because I liked my outfit and I looked hot and I was like, okay, like, you know, and I was kind of set it up and like trying to like, you know, do like selfie mode, like without, you know, holding the thing, you know, do the timer. Mm -hmm. And then Crispin walked in and he like totally pretended like he was like, oh, like, I think he said, what are you doing? Or like, he said something like very chill. And I was like, oh, no, nothing. I was just like looking at a video or like I was like trying to like, you know, not embarrass myself. I don't know why. And Wait a minute. I, we're supposed to do that when y'all bust on the nothing. We weren't doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> but then I, I, I posted that photo and, and Crispin, you know, he also like, like I do Instagram, I do crazy Twitter. I'm sure he does it too. But like, I'm one of those people who do like multiple, you know, whatever. And he just retweeted my photo and said, Mr. World knew and still knows or something like that. <laughs> like the fact that he was saying, oh, I saw you do it. I just pretended like I didn't. But you know what? I'm going to choose this moment on Twitter to tell you that I did see you. Yeah, I fooled you. I don't know if you know this about Crispin, but he's an actor. <laughs> he can make you believe something that he doesn't really feel. Yeah, that's that's so funny. And it's so funny. Like we all 
we see the pictures on Instagram. We're all taking selfies. Why do we, that is our knee jerk reaction is to be ashamed when somebody catches us in the moment of capturing that thing that we're going to post publicly for the whole world to see anyway. I know. You can't I just see me want, doing it. I just wanted to be a respectable actor like him. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, I, I didn't want to, you know, be too excited that I looked hot. <laughs> well, we're actors. We have no shame. Now, speaking of yeah. looking hot, uh, it's 2022. You seem to have a pretty substantial role as Zoe. Now your career is growing. You're getting more screen time, you know, recurring roles, things of that nature. Now there's a horror film and it's called Love Island. Can you talk about the responsibility now of you taking on more of a lead role in films and having more of a substantial screen time? And also what is the pressure like with something like that happens? Oh my God. It's just so exciting. It's like, you know, it's, it's, it's how I wanted my career to be like, and I, I'm obviously always working towards that. I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's like, if the project matters, that's real. what really I care about. But obviously as an actor, like, you know, of course I want to like lead a film. I want to know, like, you know, that's what I went to school for. So um, it's very exciting. And it also like, it does like, to me, there has also been change in that way. And I don't know if it's a social change or it's like necessarily like my, also my career just changing, but it is very exciting. And yeah, it's like, um, I'm, it's an ensemble like movie, like with a group of friends, but I am like, one of the leads in it so it's you know and I have a substantial part and it was a horror film which I've always always wanted to do and it was like I think it was my first one it was my first horror film and um it was during COVID um I had just gotten out of a breakup and um oh, I'm so oh, I'm so <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> exactly oh my god I just Bob, like I was Beyonce, but I was not. Um, <laughs> um, clearly not. Um, but yeah, it was just so cool. Like we were on, a, we were on Fire Island. I think it's actually I just heard that it got distribution. So nice. it's congratulations. Come out. Yeah, thank you. Um, I don't know if I can say it, so I'm not going to say it. But uh, in a district like that, we know. So so it's it's very exciting. And um, yeah, I it was a very very hard 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 film to film um we'll put the uh, links in the in the description for whatever social media is available for so people can anybody that's interested can keep an eye on when it becomes oh, available and where you. thank for you sure. yeah i'm i'm also um i should say this because you know i'm always available for nudity and simulated sex i do have nudity and simulated sex in it so <laughs> if anybody's interested i hope you watch it for that <laughs> and I will also include the links to the uh, to the feet website as well yeah. for the people that <laughs> are interested. In. <laughs> thank you. And if you can also link my Venmo on it, that would be amazing. Yeah. Yes. Thank you yes. so much. Yeah. I yeah. This message. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, no. Like uh, like we mentioned in the intro, you are not just on the big and small screen. You've also graced the stage a time or two. And just to name a few productions that you've starred in, there's Hit, there's Tracy Letts, Linda Vista, uh, Love and Money, Seven Deadly Sins, Daddy, which you co-starred in with uh, Alan Cumming. Um, So this is a hypothetical that we ask uh, actors that have been on all mediums. If you in a hypothetical universe where you uh, can only do one for the rest of your life, which one would, would you stay on the stage or go in front of the cameras? You know, I think like maybe t even two years ago or like three years ago, I would have said, said stage. Um, but now I love being on screen. <laughs> I love the attention. Um, I it's it's weird. I I think stage will always be my baby. Like my still dream is to like be a lead on Broadway, to be on Broadway, but like to have to be a lead on Broadway. I think that's like one of my still biggest biggest dreams. Um, but but I I enjoy. TV and movies so much, especially now, like TV has so much content and like just people are brilliant. Like people are geniuses. Everybody's a genius. I don't know how people do that, but like, and I, I think there's just such interesting stories to be told that can't necessarily always be told on stage. 
That yeah. being said, I do also think that the impact when you see a good play, I will probably never change that for anything. Like, you know, it it's just hits differently. And I don't think any TV or movie have, uh, has ever hit me in that way. Seeing live people do certain things. Yeah. Oh, so it's it's hard. It's hard. It is an interesting relationship when you're on the stage and something is incredible and you're everything is working out right. You have this like this back and forth with the audience, this energy in the room. And then but with a movie, it's like something that being on stage could never give you is like you could be sitting right there in the audience watching yeah. yourself on the screen and experiencing it with the audience. Real That's time. why I love Broadway. You know that night. There's no going home wondering. Oh, you'll know. <laughs> You'll know that night. They'll let you know. Trust me. They'll let you know. Now, let's get into the reason why you're really here, because you spoke about things you necessarily can't do on stage. And I'm pretty sure maybe some people have attempted to do cocaine on stage. No one's ever put a bear and cocaine on a stage and let them do it. So cocaine bear. You played yeah. Beth in the film. Um, you're a paramedic. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about the character without spoiling anything? And what was the audition process like? And did you have to do any bumps? <laughs> Well, okay. I just have to say, I did do bumps in um, in Daddy. I just have to let you, everybody know I I do love cocaine. Fake. <laughs> nope. I, I mean, I, just, <laughs> I, heard, I heard Alan Cummins stuff is fire too. I love, yeah. <laughs> I love Alan. I just need to to say that. I also Snip it if you got it. Yeah, I love Alan. He's amazing. Um, what a legend! Like truly a legend. Uh, uh yeah cocaine bear ah i'm just so excited <laughs> i'm also so excited because like this is a movie when i got cast in it i was like man this is a movie that i would fucking talk about for hours and hours even if i wasn't in it like yeah. this is the movie i want a be in like my favorite film of all time like, and I truly mean this, I'm not even joking, is 22 Jump Street, not 21 Jump Street, the next movie, 22 Jump Street, with Jonah Hill, and he does the slam poetry, that one, that one is my favorite, and, and I, so, you know, when I was working with, you know, when I got cast, and I saw everybody attached to it, and, and read the script, and, you know, I was just like, fuck, this is it. Like, this is what I've dreamed of, like, being a part of. Like, when, when you know, people say, what kind of movie do you want to do? This was it. So I love your honesty. Some people want to dream to work with Scorsese. Some people dream to be in Cocaine Bear. I'm in your squad. Let's it, go. it is this. one of those movies. The title, like, uh, it. the trailer is awesome. The cast is awesome. It looks fantastic. But you didn't need any of that to get me on board. Like, I heard Cocaine Bear. I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. I, and yeah, it was, yeah, I'm, I'm so psyched. So I'm just so excited. I'm totally there with you. I, I am like a, a fan of the movie, even though I'm in it, like, I'm just so excited to see it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I taped for it honestly once and, you know, I talked to the casting director. She also cast me in American gods and, you know, I, I, um, she said, if you have any questions they, to all the actors, I think who were auditioning, if you have any you know questions or you want to talk, like she was like, you know, let's talk. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so, and, and she was, she's amazing. Like Deb, the cast of Deb is just so amazing. And she is really an actor's advocate. Like, and I know people say that a lot about, about a lot of people, but she really like is such a supporter and she has been ama amazing in American Gods for me and also in Cocaine Bear. Um, but yeah, she, you know, gave me some like, you know, no, like notes about like, you know, the movie and like, you know, before I read, read it and, and I read it and it was everything and more I expected and I kind of created my own like world. Like, you know, I made her Korean because obviously I'm Korean. Um, I improv some lines in Korean and, you know, and then just like really try to be honest in the moment and, you know, just have fun. I think that's really what it was. And I think what I did really do try to do in this tape was like, just try to bring myself in. You brought up, you know, 
you brought up being cast in American Gods and then she casting you for this. And of course, even working with Elizabeth Banks. Let me ask you this here. Can you speak to, is that just to the relationship and the rapport you built with her? But can you more so speak to, that's where it comes to being a professional on set and people remembering what you do, no matter how long you've been there. Oh, I don't, I don't know, actually. Like I, I hope, I hope that like, you know, somebody said like every audition is a, a, a coin in the bank like you know like you do a good job it might not be you know I think well that's one of my professors what they said so hopefully I think if you keep up the good job and you're like a nice person to work with hopefully like you know that will continue um so I think I think it's both like I think I'm sure like it's also like I've I've you know, I've done American God, so I'm I'm sure Deb remembered me from that, and she knows me from that. Um, and I also had to audition, so like that was a new relationship with Elizabeth. Um, so I think it's like new and like you know also like I think it's also important to do your job well, <laughs> and you know, hopefully always work on it. You know, I that's what I try to do. Sometimes I get lazy, but hopefully like that's the one goal I would like to have to always work on it and not be lazy. Did you uh did you know during the audition process or when you went for the role that the production was going to be in Ireland? I think I did. I think I did. Okay. I don't my, quite my, remember, but I think I did. When I saw that the production took place in Ireland, the first thing I thought was like, "Oh man, it must be so cool to like go overseas for a production." But then it like dawned on me that like all of your productions have technically been overseas from home. Like, but did, did that? But did, did you have that like experience? Like, oh, I'm in the big time now. Like, I'm going i'm going on a plane over to this other country to shoot this film and be on location for uh, how long were you on set for for like a little less than two months that's crazy uh, uh, all, all over there yeah all over <laughs> yeah right there <laughs> yeah <laughs> i gotta say man every single time i'm i'm on a plane going somewhere to work i fucking can't believe it <laughs> Like, oh, it makes me like emotional. Like, I can't believe like this is what I chose to do. Not just because like, you know, it's cool to obviously like be on a plane and go to a different country and all this stuff, but just like to do something I love and something that is very questionable to a lot of like, you know, people as a profession, because it's a hard profession. Like, you know, every that's, you know, I think a lot of professions are hard and actors are also like, Oh, it's me. So it's like harder. It must be harder than everybody else. But well, what's I particularly <laughs> acting, acting as a profession is the paper cut of, of like hurting yourself because yeah. you get a paper cut. It hurts like hell, but nobody appreciates nobody how bad it hurts. <laughs> oh, yes. And acting is like, Oh, your job's so easy. You just you you know, I know what your life is like. No, you don't know how hard it is. That's like the hardest part about being actors. Nobody actually understands that you're, it, it's worth Work. you're actually working it's been said and it's been proven that we hear no this career you hear no more than any other career in the world yeah which is why we speak in third person yeah. <laughs> I, that is such a genius way to describe like how hard it is like you know what i mean like oh, that's amazing like i yeah it's definitely like yeah people and know. i, I I'd imagine like being in uh, like when you're on location with the crew and the cast and everything that they're that, when you guys are all like you all came from over here, you're going over here and you're spending this time to shoot the movie that uh, is, is it more like um, like a summer camp situation? Like everybody is kind of together the whole time or or what's the vibe like on something like that? Um, I think it depends on the production. Like for American Gods, I also shot in Toronto. Um, okay. uh, so and then Freaky Friday was in Vancouver. So, oh, okay. so you've been it, everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, well, Canada shoots a lot of production. So I think a lot of TV shows are, you know, they have a product. Well, I think like a stage. Putting some miles on those feet. They're going to, yeah. they're going to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you hope you put, you keep in good care of them for the, <laughs> don't want the rating to go down. <laughs> Truly, sometimes I'm a little worried. I'm like, did I not put enough lotion? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, no, it was it was great. I I got really close to my castmates. Um, it was great. Ah, oh, God, Ireland was so beautiful. Like everything about it was amazing. Like I, I I wish like I mean that was the reality. It was just so fun. Like to be on a set that I fucking wanted to be there so bad. I was so excited to be there. 
people were inspiring. Elizabeth is fucking amazing. Like she's such a boss. Like, oh, it's so cool. And, and we're speaking about know. Elizabeth Banks, of course. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask this. Uh, first of all, we're going to ask, what is it like to work with her? And what's, what, what is it like to work being a female, working with a female director, which we don't see all the time? And have you ever had any aspirations of directing? She is so cool. Like, she is so cool. And she is such a great director. Like, she's just awesome. Like, I love working with her. She, she knows what she wants, but she's also, like, freeing for the actor. Like, you know, she gives freedom to the actor, but also, like, knows what she wants. Like, it's so, like, great. And she's nice. Like, <laughs> she's so nice and kind and funny and, and, you know... <laughs> There are a lot of guys out there who think I'm a good catch. The words cute as a button have been thrown around on more than one occasion. I mean, to be honest, I've, all, luckily, I think all of the directors I've worked with have been very, very kind. Like, you know, I I don't really particularly remember somebody who was like, oh my God, I, I can't, like, that was, like, so hard. I don't have that, thank God, because I know sometimes people have those stories, and and I, I loved working with you know I love working with male directors too but like yeah there is something about working with a female director and seeing how you can take charge of the room and still be kind <laughs> and nice to people and you know and she's an actress so she she knows how to direct actors you know what I mean that's the cool part about I think what you said about earlier like I think she is definitely the epitome of that um uh, and there, there yeah. uh, she gave you the freedom to try things as far as like in the in the scenes yeah she was like i mean you know yeah like there there is the scene and she knew what she wanted but she was also like yeah try something like you know like and if she had an idea she would throw an idea if i had an idea i would throw an idea like you know and it was i felt like it was very collaborative but also it was it didn't feel like oh like what am i doing like you know sometimes when there's so much freedom you're kind of like oh like Am I in the right, like, you know, uh, am I doing like, you know, that's why you need a director. And mm -hmm. she was all of that. And which I so appreciated. And she was just so such a boss. Like, like, so. Yeah, I, I loved working with her. Um, it looks like the uh, majority of your scenes are shared with the uh, hilarious Scott Zeiss. And my introduction to him is, and I don't know if you've seen them, his stories that he does on Instagram where he's like the nine to five worker. and <laughs> So hilarious. Yeah, it's a, I, I catch the Instagram reruns, the syndication. Um, yeah. But yeah, he, he's uh, so genius. Rage applying is the new quiet quitting. It's when you apply for a job that'll pay you more. What's wrong with that? Phenomenon called wanting to live. He's just one of those guys that like he just looks like he's naturally funny without like effortlessly okay. funny. Um well do you have any stories from the set working with him? I love Scott. I think Scott is I mean, I'm sure, you know, we he'll do interviews and I'm sure people will know when you see him, you know, just normal chat, but he's he's just such a like like normal guy like I don't know how to explain like he's so like kind and he you know like sometimes you meet comedians and you know they're sometimes they're cynical or they're like trying to make you laugh or like you know you, you just get that or you meet an actor and they're like you know sometimes they're narcissistic or like including myself probably um you know and and sh he's just so chill <laughs> and yeah. you know and you know so it was I loved working with him and I and I honestly like I don't know a lot of people again but I I did see his TikTok before like I think it was one of one about the vaccine and and you know it's not like I watched all of his videos at that point but he's hilarious like he's so funny and I think it, this is his first film set like yeah. you know he's, he's been doing stand-ups and um he's been doing stands for a long time and it's, he's been doing TikTok, but this was his film, first film set and he was fucking awesome. He's hilarious. Like, so cool. Yeah, I watched I watched an interview that he did with uh, Joe Gatto from Impractical Jokers for some reason. They did something where they were talking on like an Instagram live and I was really surprised to find like he wasn't every, I, I expected everything to be a punchline. Um, he just had a very normal conversation. He was very laid back. It wasn't 
he's not too far removed from the nine to five bits that he's doing. Like that was reality for him. Like, so uh, yeah, I'm sure he's, he's ex extremely normal. Like, did he, did, was there any, um, was there any mentoring going on? Like for the fact that you've been on, you've been doing this for a while, you've been on a few film sets. Did you have any advice for him or anything like that? I don't think so. I mean, I, it felt very much like, um i did definitely want i was like let's grab a drink before we like you know shoot so we get to know each other because we're gonna like work together i think that was the only thing that we really like you know i guess the formal meet and greet i kind of like suggested um and he kindly accepted and we like you know talked about ourselves which was like really nice um and yeah on set i think it was like very collaborative like you know he's hilarious like he doesn't have to try to be. I think he's just a naturally funny guy. <laughs> yeah, so, the mustache is everything. The mustache yeah, the, really truly like, ties it all together. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like, why am I even acting? You have a mustache. <laughs> yeah, it, to it really is unfair. <laughs> you brought up uh, Instagram Live. Now, I want to break up. There's a photo on your Instagram. It's uh, mm. about 365 days since you guys have wrapped production on Cocaine Beer um, of you and your co-star, Jesse Tyler Ferguson. I now, was this press related? Was it more so personal as far as just something you guys did, Candid? And uh, did you guys get along working on this picture? What was it like? Oh, my God. No, it was it was just like a birthday party. And um, I just like, uh, you know, and the other castmate is is also in Cambridge in the picture. Um, his name is Aaron and he's one of my dear, dear, dear friends. Like we just became like after the film. I was I just saw him actually yesterday. Um, we just completely killed our story to media takeout at TMZ. We were like, this is such a hot relationship going. On. She's like, no, it's nothing. It's just a birthday party. <laughs> Next door. I'm, I'm back to it. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Yeah, it was I, I don't think anybody's going to believe that there is a hot relationship going on between her and Jesse Tyler Ferguson. I don't know if you've heard. I don't know. I, don't I mean, think, um, like, I'm still aspiring for it. I'm still pushing. <laughs> okay. I don't think Jesse's accepting, but I am pushing. I, I, I love I, as well. <laughs> Nothing against uh, you, but yeah, I doubt he's accepting. <laughs> I am not. I'm not speaking at a turn here, right? I'm no, correct. Love is love is love. Okay. Yeah, no. no Google it's... Jesse Tyler Ferguson after we're done. I will. Okay. <laughs> no, he's awesome. Like, I mean, Jesse is like I free. I geeked out because obviously, like, he's on Modern Family, and that was also like one of the first shows I saw since I moved to LA. Like, you know, I think Friends and like Will and Grace is kind of what I grew up on, and during Juilliard, I kind of didn't really watch anything because i was in school and and then like you know modern family was like so hot but also jesse's a big theater actor and so i know him from like you know spelling bee the musical like he's fucking brilliant like he's so he's a genius and the, another person i freaked out on set was margo that's inappropriate <laughs> Margot Martindale because she's a theater oh, yeah. legend like and she's a legend in all across obviously but like for me I was just like I cannot believe I'm working with somebody who's this has he's this. married to Cal on Modern, Modern Family isn't he he's married to Cal on my, the redhead yeah. you're catching up to what I was putting I'm down so now? Mad at myself. I've okay. seen every episode you're he's, right he's awesome he's with us now I'm, I'm back <laughs> we're all here okay we're here we all, we all, and, and Margot Martindale, you were. That's a good segue because you actually are driving her around. It appears so, at least in the in, in like the coolest part of the whole trailer. It's so fucking. It, it's epic. The the bear is like slow mo coming towards <laughs> the uh, ambulance, and you're behind the wheel. Scott and uh, Margot are in the back. Um, can you talk about the logistics of shooting that? And I, it, I feel like that scene is gonna. It's if that's a little too close to uh, spoiling something. Like I don't want to know anything about the scene itself. But mm -hmm. you know, just just shooting a that seems like a pretty intense scene. It was. I mean, that's pretty much what I shot for two months. <laughs> <laughs> like I mean because it's a lot of action it's a lot of like it's the bear doing stuff it's like you know it's a lot of like moving parts it takes you know going back to what you were saying about how long it takes like I was like wow this is it did it it does take a long time <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah we go on again we bet the one all right, oh, yeah. one. I'm sorry, am I am I talking too much? No, I'm just imagine how you're feeling on set. You were like, yeah, it was interesting how long it took. We're back to one again. Back, back to one. <laughs> no, right, we're going again. 
it did really take a long time. Um, yeah. And, but it was, it was very, it was so fun. It's, you know, like I had really do, like awesome two castmates, scene partners who were so hilarious and funny that it made me laugh during a lot of the shots, which I probably shouldn't have done, but it was so fun. And like, it's a make-believe, you know, you're pretending like you're driving a car or I did, I did actually drive an ambulance. They, they, I, I believe they shipped an ambulance um, to Ireland because that had to be in the eighties. And, and I drove that and I am that stereotype. I don't like to promote it, but I do not drive well. So I think everybody no. in the car was very nervous. <laughs> Yes. I don't swim well. Don't feel bad. So you're so you are actually driving, and are there any scenes where there's stunt drivers used, or on a trailer, or anything like that? I think I think there was a. St- I did have a stunt, but I don't know. We like at some point the I think the car was stopped, and it like you know they did the whole moving thing, looking like it moved. But I definitely did drive the ambulance. Like, uh, how scary was it to have a? bear behind you while you're trying to act in this don't ask me i'm (laughs) I'm just i'm playing ignorant here jackie moon i'm assuming that the bear is cgi correct there was no bear behind you right no no there There was an amazing actor who acted like a bear um oh really yeah and who re recreated um you know and and did the motion but i don't really know how the motion capture works and all that but um yeah Nope. Now, one of the things I think is on the bucket list of most actors and actresses is to one day work with someone in the industry we feel is an icon or a legend. And even if it was just one moment, you got to work with uh, the legendary uh, Ray Liotta. This was his last role. Did you have any opportunity to speak with him? And even if you didn't, what was it like to find out this was his last film and you were on the set of that production? Oh, God. Well, at that point, I didn't know it was his last film. So, <laughs> that would have been crazy if you did. Yeah. <laughs> I so it, it was very exciting um to have such a legend, you know, on the same film. Like that's so exciting. And it's, you know, it's it's obviously like heartbreaking. I also saw him in um I think the show Blackbird, is that what it is called? I think that's yeah, I think yeah, so. Um, yeah, and he is so like amazing like he's so fantastic in that show like truly like like yeah so i i didn't really get a chance to work with him um because none of our you know we don't we didn't overlap and our shoot days also didn't overlap so i didn't even really get to see him in the makeup trailer or anything but it's it's an honor just to like know that we're in the same film yeah i couldn't imagine yeah. Um, yeah, like the, the people do that uh, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. There is uh, zero degrees between you and Ray Liotta. Um, I see what you did there. Before we move on from Cocaine Bear, is there anything else about the production or any memory that stands out to you or anything that you think fans uh, that fans that will come to love the film would like to know? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's a really fun film. <laughs> I think it's like, it's so funny. Everybody's hilarious. I'm, I mean, I'm sure you can tell from the uh the trailer but it's like everybody's in it is iconic like <laughs> they it do looks everything. like it's it's just there to have a good time is that, yeah. is, that the, is that the tone of the film like is that i think so like i i think so i mean you know i i don't want to speak for the whole film but when i read it i was like fuck this is like you know i think i saw an interview that elizabeth um did and it said putting um comedy and horror and that's what it is like it's and like truly like two of my favorite genres like just a, just a dream like what a dream i still can't believe it like i just want to like everybody to know like i'm still having a moment like <laughs> that i am in cocaine bear i haven't been able to scream at i know her in a movie in so long so it's going to happen soon i'm going to tell you that <laughs> right now <laughs> Moving on from Cocaine Bear, we've barely scratched the surface, and this is all according to IMDb, nearly 40 projects that you've worked on. And um, we've missed gems like Grey's Anatomy, Mr. Mayor, 911, and Minsky, and not to mention the K-Town Killer and Above the Clouds, which are according to IMDb currently listed in various stages of production. Now, is there anything that we or IMD may have missed that you do not have an NDA about that you can discuss? Well, Above the Clouds is uh, the one that I, uh, it was like a two-hander film. Um, and it's, 
it's it's coming out soon. So I think it's going to a, a theater festival uh, very soon. So that will have its premiere. Um, and then Love Island is having its premiere. And um, I'm currently shooting uh, sh like this short with um, Margaret Cho, who is another idol of mine. Like ha I met her today. She's playing my mom. And I had a little freak out moment um, because it's just... I can't believe it. sometimes I can't believe what I'm doing. I truly can't like, <laughs> I'm so grateful. Um, but yeah, I'm shooting that film and, um, the director is amazing. Like, like the cast is awesome. I'm having a blast. So, so I'm excited to see that short as well. <laughs> That is awesome. Well, congratulations on all your success. And we, when this airs, we will have already seen cocaine bear, but as of right now, we can't wait to see it. And, um, <laughs> And before we say goodbye, is there anything that actually I, I'm not even asking if there is anything you have to have something. Is there, are there parting words? Uh, the floor is all yours. Anything to lead the audience with? Oh my God. That's so much pressure. Yeah. We like, yeah. <laughs> 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 like truly. Um, uh, Parting words. I don't know. I it's hope not a game show knows. host. You got to come up with. Are there any? Are there any words you would like to give the society we live in? And go. Okay, that's God. different. You said no, the, same, that's the same thing. It's melodious. I literally just said tits out for the boys. So or the girls or they them and everybody. <laughs> um, <laughs> but honestly, I think just be nice. <laughs> just be a kind person. I guess. I be more like Chris Ben Glover. If everybody and was more like Crispin Glover, this world would truly, be better. If, so much better. If everybody was Crispin Glover, it would be. <laughs> yeah, don't be more like him. Just be him. Just, That's just promo. Yeah, just don't be yourself and be like Crispin. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> once again, uh, Kayin, thank you very much for uh, taking the time. And um, I just want to say you've been one of our most <laughs> honest interviews we've ever. I mean, I truly mean that. Like, we'll take really? a pause. We were so open and honest, and we truly appreciate the candidate. Oh, I, I hope so. I hope I didn't say anything, like, that was too boring. No. <laughs> and you can call it out if it's boring or if anything's Always else. asshole, Asian, Asian, African American. We're all good. <laughs> I can't believe we said Asian, Asian, always No, you asshole. said that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. What are we going to do about that? What if change. all three of us get canceled because we said Asian Asian? <laughs> we, go down, we go down together. Okay, <laughs> cool. That. We have, our, our ship has a lot less trajectory before it hits the ground than yours does. We have um, a lot less to lose here. We, Yeah, okay. but anyway. Good that, luck on your you. career. Much success. And yes. hopefully just do us one favor. When you do your next film, yeah. come back on and let us interview you. Oh my God, of course. Anytime. Guys, this has been such a, like, so fun. Like, truly, you guys are fucking awesome. Like, I'm so glad you randomly reached out on Instagram because sometimes people reach out and I'm like, oh, I'm so scared. But you like your questions were truly like, like I was like, man, like you guys are awesome. Like, I can't wait to watch it. I can't wait to watch other episodes. And I'm so glad I found you guys. Thank you very much. Like a broken elevator, we will not let you down. Thank you so much. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs> good night, guys. <laughs>